generational, transgenerational God. What I begin in one generation, I continue in the next. And I continue in the next. And I continue in the next. That is how my plans have always advanced. That is how my move have always continued. But some see me now as just the God of one generation. They see no continuity. They missed it. They missed me. And so, some experience my glory, but it dies with them. A generation enjoys my move. My word comes. My move in the church, but then it stops with them. And a new generation arises that have no revelation of me. That is not my will. That is not my plan. My plan is a multi-generational plan. And now I am speaking to the church. I am touching the hearts of men and women all over this nation. And yea, even all over the earth. That it's time for you to redirect your focus. To redirect your focus from the things that don't last. From the things that do not please me. And to direct your focus back to my plans and the way I do things. When I called Abraham, I didn't call him for himself. I called him to raise a nation. A generation through whom. Christ will come. I called him, not for him, but for his seed. 
That is why I called him. And when I call you, I do not call you for yourself. I never call a church for itself. I call a church for the seed. For the seed. But many are focused on just themselves. And they have forgotten the seed. But I call you right now to repentance. I call you now to focus on the seed. Because it's the seed that will be accounted for a generation. It is the seed that will fulfill my purpose. It is the seed that will possess the gates of the enemy. And so let this, let this be a message from me. Let this be a clarion call, a trumpet blowing, that a new thing is happening. I'm raising up people. I'm raising up churches. We will forget about the money, forget about the building, forget about the prestige, the fame, but they will focus on the things that matter to me, the things that move my heart. I have said, allow the little children to come to me and do not hinder them, for of them is the kingdom of God. I'm still saying the same thing. It is time to remove the barriers. It is time to change your focus. It is time to turn your attention to what my attention is on. And it will come to pass that as you catch my vision and as you reorientate your ministry, your callings, your churches, your services, and City Light as we reorientate our services, I hear the Spirit saying, and our focus to what, what God is concerned about. I will come. My kingdom will come in ways that you have never imagined. You will see my hand. You will see my blessing. You will see me moving because you are focusing on the thing that matter to me. To every parent in this place, to everyone with a child. Those children are your seed. They are your arrows. They are the arrows in the hand of the mighty man. Arrows are supposed to be targeted. They are supposed to be shot. They are supposed to be directed. Arrows reach far, farther than the person who shoots the arrow. That's my plan. They are supposed to reach farther than you. But you must target them. You must focus. You must know where they are supposed to be and guide them and strengthen them and give them momentum. As you do it, I will take over. Like I took over the slingshot of David and used it to bring down the liar. I will take over. Don't be, don't, don't, don't be concerned. If it looks like you're, you're guiding them and they, they, they seem not to be getting it. You do what, you, what I want you to do. I'll take over and I'll take those little slingshots and I'll bring down the Goliaths of this land. A new generation is rising. A new generation is rising. But it's time for you to shift your focus to what I am doing, says the Spirit of the Lord. You may be seated. Ushers, look up here. Your pastor, I, Pastor Land's a friend of mine. He didn't ask me to do this. You can stay right there. Just stay right there. You're doing great. But I'm going to do it for your ministry. I don't need an offering. I don't. But you do. Because you have a building that's unfinished. You have children who attend this ministry that may not even have curriculum or lesson plans to teach them on Sunday. I know that because I've ministered to children for 20 years. I want to receive an offering tonight for the children of City Light Church first and foremost. If it's only to buy a series of videos for them to watch that are Christian or for Pastor Land to buy curriculum for the kids so that the Sunday school teachers can teach the kids.
It's not to buy drywall. It's not to buy screws. It's not to buy a piece of equipment. It's to buy materials that will minister to your children. I just ask that Pastor Lan and Davo would promise me that. I, I don't send me an offering. <laughs> I don't need to send me an offer. I don't need to leave tonight with a check. I want to sow it back to your ministry. So you can give some money tonight to your own kids and put a priority. And then make sure that the leadership and the pastor take those monies and again buy a volume of curriculum for the kids. Buy something to teach them about Christmas that's coming up. And have a special lesson for your kids during Christmas and somebody teach them something fresh that they hadn't heard before. Do that. Maybe, maybe here's something. Even take some of that money and with Christmas coming up, why don't you have a little Christmas party for them? Buy the kids cookies and serve them juice and bless those kids during Christmas. Teach them a beautiful lesson about God beautiful lesson about their Lord and Savior Jesus and have those resources on Christmas and then begin to tell the kids, hey kids, I'm talking to your children. I'm not talking children right now outside of you. I'm talking about your children, his kids, your kids, and then begin to tell your children, hey kids, at Christmas we're going to have a special little something just for you. And the kids start feeling like, you mean to tell me you put the priority on me? We're going to be the focus. I can't wait. I want to receive an offering tonight for your generation of children that attend this ministry. You can make your checks out to City Life Church. You can give on your debit or credit card, yes. I'm going to ask the ushers to come around if you would please and begin to pass out envelopes to those that are giving. Would you sing for us? You're doing a great job. Praise God. Stay there, stay there. Don't come out of that. I know she wants to. The spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Spirit of nice the Sovereign Let's teach about Jesus. Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Glory of the living God, Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of the living God. If an usher hasn't waited on you, put the your offering in the air. Put your offering in the air like glory. this, gentlemen.
this what it's going to be in five years from now. You can fix this building up all you want. This community right now is hurting. If you're going to reach it, listen to me. You better start with that young generation. Wandering these streets. They have no fire. Listen to your pastor. Because whether you agree or not, the pastor's agreeing with you right now. He's hearing what the Lord is saying. That priority must be put there. I'll guarantee you, if you begin to put a priority on that generation in five years, this ministry will be more than you could ever ask for. You would tell me that 16 years later after pastoring that church, that I'd be moving into a building that costs six million dollars with no mortgage. You don't hear stories like that. Do you? You've never heard a story like that. Most churches have a board. I'm going to be in a building, fully remodeled, brand new inside. Six million dollars. No board. You don't get lucky. Stop by our table back there before you leave tonight. We were recently featured in a nationally known magazine called Charisma. These are free. Everything back there is free. You don't have to pay for nothing. There's DVDs and videos. My wife will be back there. DVDs and videos about our ministry. There's one particular video back there of myself preaching faith to make an impact. It's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. Just grab it, pop it in your DVD player when you leave, take it home. There's tons of stuff back there that we just try to make people aware of what we're doing. And then if you want to, later on, if you want to partner with us on a monthly basis, you can go right ahead and do that because we still have children and teenagers that we continue to reach in the northern suburbs of Chicago. God bless you, your pastor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, let's appreciate Pastor Louis one more time. start from um, Pastor Louis has been preaching here for I think about five years or four years now. And every time he comes, he comes with the word that takes us to the next level. I remember, I remember when we were about to move into this building and we were just stuck. You know, we had raised some money, but it was just not enough, and we just could not make that move. We had a retreat and Pastor Louis came to preach and he just preached. He preached a message. The week after, the week after he preached it, the whole church got stirred up and people started giving $5,000, $10,000. We crossed over. You know, I just remember, um, you know, when, uh, when Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah were trying to build the, uh, the walls of Jerusalem, rebuild Jerusalem, they said it stopped for a while. And then they said the prophet came and they were helping them. Prophet like Haggai and Zechariah and spoke not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of God. And they were able to move on to the next level. That's what Pastor Louis has always been to this church. And I really want us to appreciate him. I mean, I thank God for having him as a friend. In Chicago. Sometimes my wife and I would just drive all the way to Zion and just be with him and his wife. And we just share, talk, encourage one another to come back to church. I want to appreciate him. I want to appreciate Jay, Jordan. I wanna, let's appreciate Jordan and um, the whole of the team. We appreciate the Church of Joy. Thank you. And I love Pastor Louis. Pastor, let me tell you, so Pastor Louis does not receive honorarium. Pastor Louis just says, just give it to you. Whatever you want to give, give it to the ministry. And that's why God keeps blessing them. So please take advantage of all those things that he has in that place that he brought. Take as many as you can and support their ministry. 
We are partners with their ministry. Support their ministry. Pray for them. They are doing a wonderful work um, in the Chicagoland area. And if, for those, I mean, you can also watch their show, especially the daughter, um, the Madi Ratio. You can watch it on WJYS right now. They're coming out with a new season. My kids love Madi Ray. Amen. They just love it. Well, all of them love Madi Ray. You should watch it. You could go on YouTube and, you know, just type her name. It's like, one thing I love about it, it's like a Disney, like Disney quality, but it's Christian. And she's just 15 years old. Years old. Doing amazing things for God. So such things encourage us. And we'll keep on praying for you. Pastor Louis, Trisha, we'll keep on praying for you. Thank you so much for always being a blessing to us. We love you. Amen. I want to appreciate some of my uh, other friends. Thank you. you can go sit down. Bless you. I want to appreciate Kay and Olu. Let's put hands together for them. They arrived from, Okla from Oklahoma, Atlanta. You know, I don't know which one is which. You know, okay, all right, so. <laughs> Today, and um, they, they're going to be with us tomorrow morning. The Glow Award. I, you know, they just released a book called The Vision Guided Life. I've been reading excerpts of it on Facebook. And I just, I wanted them to come share some nuggets about the book. And you're going to hear them share about it tomorrow. Um, I believe that you brought some copies, right? All right. So, awesome. So, we're going to have some copies, you know, for, for us that we can purchase. And I believe it's going to transform our lives. I want to appreciate my friend, also Pastor Dala. Let's put hands together for Pastor Dala. <laughs> Pastor Dala, all the way from Omaha, one of my best friends. He delivered a very powerful message yesterday. How many of you were here yesterday or watching it online? That was awesome. A message that has brought transformation in the area of financial empowerment to everyone here. I want to appreciate you and I want to appreciate Leanne. Leanne is uh, Pastor Dada's assistant. And she came here specifically because Pastor Bossy Adelaja wants her to be here to minister to her. So she came to serve Pastor Bossy, who I believe has arrived right now. Amen. And is in the hotel. Pastor Sino Agueze also has arrived. He's in the hotel right now. He's going to be preaching tomorrow morning at the Glow Awards and also preaching at the Flavors Celebration of Nations tomorrow. The concerts we're going to be having is going to be powerful. Amen. I want to appreciate all the way from Nigeria, but he came from Maryland this time around. This is so interesting. 13 years ago, or almost 13 years ago, when we got married, um, we were thinking, who were we going to invite for our wedding, the reception, to sing? Wonder somebody spiritual, somebody that could, you know, just flow in the anointing of God. And somebody said, you know, why don't you invite... Um, you know, Albert Kunle Ajayi. So he came then to uh, Shagam where we got married and he played. And I remember that day after the uh, wedding, he gave us a CD. So when, for the first few years of our marriage, we were rocking a CD, remember? In the car. <laughs> Just rocking it, rocking it. And then I went to Nigeria last year uh, with, the, with a team from there. We were doing some trainings for some pastors over there. And they had invited him. And I saw him. And I said, do you remember 10 years ago? Well, 11 years ago. So I don't even remember anymore. Amen. <laughs> he said, do you remember that you, you played at a wedding? He said, where? I said, in Shagamo. He said, yeah. He said, at one hotel like that? I said, yes. I said, I was the one that was getting married then. I did, I did not even know he's going to be here in City Light at this time. Amen. But God did it from then. He's, he came to the United States, and I'm glad that he's around to be a blessing to us throughout this conference. He's going to be here till Sunday. Amen. How many of you enjoyed this ministry today? We're going to have more of that. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate you. Amen. Why don't we rise up on our feet right now? I know we, we had some things planned, you know, that I wanted to, but we allowed the Holy Ghost to move. Isn't that true? Amen. So, and the Holy Spirit moved. How many of you feel refreshed? Do you feel revived? Are you stronger? Do you have a focus? How many of you suddenly know your ministry right now? 
How many of you know what City Light is supposed to do in this place? If you know what City Light is supposed to do in Chicago, can you shout it out loud? I can't hear you. Yeah, what? Minister to what? Minister to what? In other words, we, the, you know, somebody said the Great Commission. You know, there's the Great Commission, what Jesus gave us. He said, when you take C out of commission, it becomes the great omission. And the C is children. It becomes the great omission. The entire church is committing the great omission. D.L. Moody went to preach one day and he came back. His wife asked him, how was it? How did it go? How many people got saved? D.L. Moody said, there were two and a half people that got saved. <laughs> two and a half. So the wife thought, okay, two must be adults. Half must be, the, must be a child. So, so the wife said, how old was the child? Dear Moody said, no, it was one adult and two children. He said, why? He said, because the adult has lived half of his life already. <laughs> but, the, but the children are just starting their life. And listen, if you live in Chicago, if you, live, if you are anywhere around Chicago, you cannot but be in the midst of the legacy of D.L. Moody. Almost everything Christian around Chicago area, D.L. Moody has something to do with it. The Pacific Garden Mission, D.L. Moody. The YMCA, D.L. Moody. Moody Bible Institute. It's just so many things. Even the radio, all those things still going on. But do you know how Moody, Moody started? What did he do? In those days in Chicago, there was a place called The Sands. The Sands. That's where Lakeshore Drive is now. That place, in those in the days of D.L. Moody, you can't go, you don't want to go there. It's, it was full of poor people, poor children. They would steal things from you. You can't, it was the hood there, but there was no black person there. Amen. It was terrible. It was called the Sands. Some of you should go research it. Type it into Google, the Sands, Chicago. And you see, that was where D.L. Moody began his ministry. He began his ministry by going to the Sands and then taking kids there and bringing them to church. Then in those days, you had to rent pews. You had to rent pews for, you know, you have to pay for your pews. So you, should we reach to that? <laughs> yes, you can. Everybody had to pay for their pews. So dear Modi will rent pews. He will rent the bad pews of church, of churches, and then he will fill it with children from the streets. And the children were unruly, and all that, and after a while, churches will ban him. <laughs> Say, we don't want any of those kids anymore. After a while, after struggling with many churches, he decided that, you know what, I'm not even going to work with churches anymore. So he started his own Sunday school. And just started ministering to those kids. That is how everything came. That's how the, everything that he did came. He came from all that. Because he prioritized what God prioritized. Hallelujah. We're going, to ha we're going to focus on God's priority. Everybody say, we're going to focus on God's priority. You know, I've been saying it. We're going to focus on God's priority. We're not here for ourselves. Somebody say, we're not here for ourselves. We're here for those who are coming after us. We're not here for ourselves. We're here for those who are coming after us. And that will be our focus. And that's what we're going to do. And I'm glad all of you are stayed up to do it right now. Because after this anniversary, we're going to multiply in that area. Amen. We're going to do it. Are you in agreement with me? Why don't you lift up your hands and let's, let's pray together. Let's pray together. Join your faith with me in agreement. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We receive your word. We receive Pastor Louis and his team. We receive them as prophets from you. We receive the words that they've spoken about the spirit of Elijah and how God is turning the heart of the father to the children, the heart of children to fathers. We receive your word about correcting the neglect. We receive your word about focusing on what is important to you. We receive your word about not just becoming another church like the ones around the block. We receive your word about not just taking on 
the attitudes of the society that we find ourselves but to impose the kingdom attitude upon the society. We receive your word about letting your power flow, letting your spirit move without hindrance. We refuse to allow the spirit of Chicago to, to creep into this church. The spirit that is always in a hurry, the spirit that has no time for God, the spirit that cannot wait, and stay and listen but that is always moving we refuse to allow it to come instead we allow your spirit to move in this place and that is what is going to be imposed upon our community oh father in the name of Jesus we ask for your help we ask for your strength help us in the name of Jesus we pray Lord that in one year's time in two years time in five years time by the time we are having this glow conference the word that we have received here today will have brought, brought forth great fruit as men from the next generation. Some of them who are walking on the street right now will have come in contact with Christ and God, you, you, they will be raised up for your glory. Father, we thank you. We commit the rest of these meetings into your hand. Tomorrow morning, 11, the, the Glow Awards, the Flavors Concert, and on Sunday in the afternoon, we commit it all into you and we commit all your speakers coming. We commit everyone that is around right now in Chicago into your hand. We ask that your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your glory be seen. And as we leave this place today, we thank you for your presence that is always with us. Thank you so much, Lord, because you continue to speak to our hearts. And you will, you will, you will customize the words that we have heard today for each and every one of us as it fits into our callings. We receive it now in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. End of meeting. God bless you.